welcome you all to the second DDS virtual town hall. I'm your WebEx MC, Derek Young. I think we can all agree that 2021 has gotten off to an interesting start, but it's a new year, so let's have a new outlook. The theme for today's All Hands Town Hall is maintaining the mission. Colleagues were asked to submit a one-minute video describing how we contribute to the overall success of our agency. And today you're in for a treat. We want to hear from those colleagues who've made our agency a success. And here to get us started to shake off 2020 and prepare us to move into 2021 is Zumba instructor extraordinaire representing Kwatma, the lovely Miss Teresa Peel. Yeah, 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 I'm doing that, but I don't know why. Okay, so I'm Hello, I am Teresa Peel, staff assistant to Kirk Dobson, deputy director for the Quality Assurance and Performance Management Administration. One of the ways that I contribute to the success of the agency is by providing administrative support to the department. This includes managing calendars and scheduling meetings. I also send out various correspondence, such as long-term acute care memos to quality trust regarding the people we serve sanction letters to providers informing them whether or not they are clients as well as reopen plan approval events i also transcribe the weekly community and provider forum meetings to be uploaded on the website for the public's view it is no secret that 2020 has been challenging and really really hard at times feeling like a full salt on our happiness and our peace of mind Another way that I contribute to the success of the agency is by offering virtual Zumba classes and stretch classes to my colleagues to help with our mental and physical well-being while coping with this crisis. Moving our bodies in Zumba class triggers feel-good endorphins, and the stretch classes help to reduce stress and anxiety, bringing about a certain calm. And finally, we get to see and talk with one another weekly, maintaining that connectivity, even if it is just virtually. Good morning, everyone. Glad to be here with you on this lovely day. I am going to get you energized for this fantastic virtual All Hands Town Hall. I'm going to start with a nice little warm up stretch to get you loosened up, get that blood flow into the muscles, and then we'll do an easy to follow Zumba routine. And if you feel like you can't do it because you think that you don't have any rhythm or coordination, just get up and move. Do your own thing. I'm going to need everybody to get up on your feet. Let's get started. I'm going to stand like this, legs, shoulder width apart, stomachs in tight, just relax the body. I'm <laughs> 
Great job, Teresa. Yeah. But guys, you guys should be wide awake now. The heart rate should be up and your muscles feeling good. So we're going to move on to our next video from a couple more of our employees. We have Ethioma Muoka and Cheryl Butler. Hi, everyone. I'm Ethioma Muoka. A DDS service coordinator. I happen to be one of those that lost somebody supported to COVID-19. On the positive side, I'll tell you in a minute a few things that I accomplished during this pandemic period. I used a combination of natural support, state plan, and weather services to help several people in my case to return employment. I had two people placed in DDS supervised housing they would have otherwise been homeless. And one of them, with the collaboration of my RSA colleague, will soon start work. I also use the help of DDS community liaisons to eradicate bed bugs from the home of a person living in a natural home setting. His family also received information on community resources to use to replace discarded furniture items. I ensured a person in my case, Lord, I got in trouble with the law for threatening people, start receiving anger management counseling in advance of his upcoming court hearing, and also got a lady struggling with anxiety and insomnia to start receiving services from a community-based behavioral health clinic. And since then, she continues to report doing well. Thank you. Hello, and thank you for allowing me to introduce myself. My name is Cheryl Butler, and I am the newly appointed Adaptive Equipment Compliance Specialist. And my role here is to manage the identified adaptive equipment needs of our participants and to assure that our providers stay in compliance and follow our policies and procedures in order for our participants to receive their adaptive equipment in a timely manner. And it is an honor and a pleasure to be a part of such a great team that's making a difference in our participants' lives. Thank you so much to Ethioma and Cheryl Butler. Coming up next, we have remarks from our agency director, Mr. Andrew Reese. Good morning, everyone. This is Andy Reese. I'm so happy to welcome you this morning to our second virtual town hall. I know there are a number of you that join our monthly calls, but today, so far, we have 356, 357. We're getting up to our full complement, I hope, of 403 staff members connected via WebEx and by their phone. Uh, through WebEx and telephone this uh, and other virtual platforms, that's how we now do business here at DDS. And it's incredible to think how long we've now been working remotely. Next month will mark one year. I really appreciate each of you and your dedication to the people that we support, your resilience, your innovative approaches that you've implemented to maintain our mission. You are truly the reason that DDS succeeds. In today's town hall, we're going to highlight some of our accomplishments from 2020. I hope that you have your cell phones handy to join in a round of Kahoot we'll be playing. We'll be checking to see just how many of us know about our current performance measures. Throughout the meeting, we'll hear from a number of our staff members about how they've contributed to, to the success of our agency. And we'll also have a couple of wellness exercises to help us manage our anxiety and frustration as we deal with the new, um, all of the changes that coronavirus has brought to our lives over the last year and as we move forward. 
Um, I will say we did a run of show a couple of days ago, and I was told it was exactly the show as it would be. But uh, Teresa Zumba was far shorter the other day than it was today. So I hope that all of you have gotten up and gotten some exercise and are really energized and ready for our meeting today, as I am. If I'd have known it was going to be so energetic, I'd have provided a caution in the beginning. Make sure, you know, that if it gets to be too much, you just relax for a moment. Um, but before we get into the review of our performance measures for 2020, we're going to hear from some of our nurses, followed by Charlotte Roberts, who will give us an overview of how the performance plan works. So first up, let's hear from the nurses. The health and wellness unit works closely with other DDS units and departments, families, provider agencies, and healthcare facilities to provide the information and tools necessary to advocate for the best possible health care and health outcomes for the people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Here are a few examples of what we do. We care. We care about the health and wellness of every person served. We advocate. We ensure every person receives the best medical care and health coordination possible. We are empathetic. We understand what it means to be on the front line and to provide support to our healthcare workers. We are compassionate. We strive for high emotional intelligence to best handle interpersonal relationships with provider nurses and persons served to ensure all needs are met. We are influencers. We are change agents, motivating our provider nurse community to be the best that they can be. We're best in Senate. We make sure that what is important to and important for our DDS persons are addressed. We are leaders. We provide current evidence-based knowledge and guidance that has proven outcomes. We are culturally competent. We understand the importance of providing care to all people with tolerance and respect regardless of nationality, race, beliefs, or customs. We are educators. We provide teaching as well as technical assistance to our nurses, providers, and community. We are dedicated. We help to ensure the best possible outcome when a person is hospitalized and in the community. We are also advocates. We are your voice to help ensure you receive appropriate treatment while in the hospital but also compassionate. We help families to understand their options to help their loved ones while in the hospital, in the community. We are innovators. We create new and innovative ways of providing the best service to our DDS persons. We are accountable. We are accountable for more than 2,000 persons who count on us to get it right every time. We are nurses and we make a difference. We are nurses. And we make a difference. We are nurses 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 and we make a difference. We are nurses. And we make a difference. We are nurses. And we make a difference. Yes, we're giving a big shout out and thank you to our nurses. And absolutely, you all make a difference. Coming up next to the stage, we have a performance plan. A, what is a performance plan presentation followed by Kahoot presented by Charlotte Roberts. Good morning, good morning, good morning, DDS. It's such a pleasure to be here again. I'm Charlotte Roberts, the performance management manager here at DDS. And on behalf of the entire performance management team, we thank you for the opportunity to be here to highlight some of the great work that has been done previously to the public health emergency and definitely throughout. So when we talk about maintaining the mission, when we talk about 
how do we align our work with our the, the mission of the agency and the objectives, it's really outlined in our annual performance plan, which is something that every single district agency is required to complete every single fiscal year. So when you think about the performance management unit, if every single program, if every single administration is their own story or their own chapter, performance is responsible for putting that all together, coalescing all that information, and then publishing that story, that, that book of DDS to federal reporting or state or the office of the city administrator and things like that. So whenever we're monitoring ISPs completed on time or monitoring tools completed within three days of a visit or healthcare management plans completed on time or case review, I can go through the whole list, but I'm not going to, I promise. But these kind of things matter to us. So, so whenever you wonder how your work aligns to the mission, it's because that data is what we use to then inform how we're doing in alignment with our mission. And then overall, when we're reporting these um, statistics to federal partners or even district partners, it's that knowledge base that helps us really figure out, well, how, how can we improve our policies? How can we improve our procedures based on that data that we received? And then the information that we share with each other uh, with internal and external stakeholders. So the specific units of measurement that we use, we call KPIs, these key performance indicators. Currently in our plan, there are about 18 that span across the entire uh, agency. So that's for DDD, RSA, and DDA. So each quarter, if the performance team will collect data from uh, unit representatives, identify where we have uh, strong points, but also points for growth and opportunity. And then we have to report all that justification to the Office of the City Administrator so that we can kind of keep in line with what we say we're gonna do and also kind of help us to make adjustments throughout the year. And ultimately, when we get to that knowledge portion, when we go data information knowledge, we, we ultimately wanna to get to a data-driven decision-making process. And as you all have known, unprecedented, I think, is, is doesn't even begin to highlight or even describe um, this work environment that we've been under, but just kudos to this entire uh, agency for how we've been able to prevail and still continue with the mission of the agency and help people really to live um, life their way. So next slide, please. So we don't have to go into the specifics of it. I did put a link um, right in the chat box for those who wanna get not only the current performance plan or our performance accountability report, but you can see those as far back as FY13 and beyond. Um, but it's just to highlight those five strategic objectives that are in our plan. And it is important to point out that that last um, objective that create and maintain a highly effective, transparent and responsive district government, that's not an objective that's unique to us, that's shared across the entire um, district government um, agency cohort. So it's even though our work is different, there are some common threads amongst us that really help to align the mission of the uh, city administrator's office and ultimately to really improve the lives of uh, district residents. So if anyone has any questions with that, I know it was a very brief overview, but again, the performance team is here to help you all tell the story of the great work that you're doing and any way that we can continue to collaborate to, to make that story ring true. We're more than happy to, to assist. So we're here if you need us. So now if you're ready to have a little bit of fun at work. Um, we're going to play a quick game of Kahoot, which is I'm going to share as soon as I can get access to share my uh, content. Just bear with us one quick second. So what you are gonna do is have your phone handy. I know it hasn't been near you this whole time because you've been focused on this. I know I have it and so many people text me during Zumba. I'm sorry, the way my cardiovascular health is set up, I'm not gonna do Zumba, but thank you for texting. Um, so if you wanna take out your phone and go to www.kahoot.it, that's uh, www.kahoot.it. And when prompted, you're going to enter in the pin of 9407134. And again, uh, to Director Reese's point, I know there was about over 350 people uh, in this session. So I don't, I don't know if we're going to get that many, but we definitely hope to get something close to it to get just a representative sample. And thank you for those who are um, kind of logging in right now. Again, you want to go to www.kahoot.it. Uh, that's K A H O O T dot I T. And you're going to type in the game pen 9407134. In addition to entering in that pen, you're also going to get an automatically generated na um, nickname uh, for those who wanted to kind of protect their anonymity. Or if you want to be extremely competitive and tell me who you are, feel free to send that in the chat box. But 
Um, and I, I mean, let's be honest, these nicknames are kind of awesome. So uh, hopefully you can carry them forward if you want to in your regular course of life. <laughs> but uh, I think they're kind of kind of cool for Kahoot. So again, that's www.kahoot.it. That's K-A-H-O-O-T.it. And that game pin is 940-7134. Four. We're just gonna give people a couple more minutes that we can get to at least uh, 115 or director issue. Let us know how many people you think are appropriate because I know it's important to get as many people um, logged in as we can. And and the numbers are climbing pretty quickly, so I think we give it just a couple more seconds, we should reach a pretty um, significant number. Again, that's www.kahoot.it, K-A-H-O-O-T.it, and that game pin is 940. Seven one three four. So I just Charlotte, while people are getting logged in, I just want to say one thing that I neglected to mention. Sure. Uh, when I welcomed people, which is at the end, we're going to have a space for questions and answers. So as we go throughout this morning, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat and we'll respond to all of them at the end. I've already seen one question so far, so I'll be taking note and making sure that we get to everyone's questions by the end of the meeting. Perfect. Thank you, Dr. Reese. Again, for those of you who may just be getting back to your computers, we're just going to play a quick little interactive game of Kahoot. And to access that, you can just open up a web browser or use your phone and go to www.kahoot.it. That's uh, K-A-H-O-O-T.it. And when prompted, you're going to enter the game pin of 940-7134. And then you're also just going to be able to spin the nickname generator and then have uh, an alias <laughs> assigned to you, which is kind of fun. And it's okay to have fun at work. If you've ever had one of the HR trainings with Andre and Philip, you know for a fact it's possible to learn and have fun at the same time. So we're just trying to bring that that philosophy forward in everything that we do. So we get to 1.30, I think we'll just keep going in, in the interest of time and the, the great content that we have prepared for today. And if you don't get a chance to log in for here, we do have another Kahoot later in the session. So. Um, we will make sure that you all have an opportunity. So, without further ado, we can just get going. So, even though this is going to say quiz, it's not. There's no way we can assign your answers to you. This isn't some type of um, weird check in to see who's here. This really is just a fun way to reinforce all the information that we've just kind of learned. And I don't know about you, but I've been inundated with information, good information, not just today, but just throughout this whole public health emergency. So it's a good way to reinforce it. So are you ready to have a little fun at work is the first question. And so you'll see there are four response options. There's a red triangle for I am ready. There's a gold circle for I'm going to win. Uh, there's a blue, tri uh, blue diamond, I'm sorry, for hold on, I need a snack. And then there's a green square for sorry, I fell asleep. So let's see how we're doing with these answers. Uh, if you know me, you know which one I'm going to pick, but I'm not going to continue to put myself out there about my snacks, uh, but I would need a snack to be very clear. Okay, so here we go. I'm ready. Perfect. All righty. So first question, how many objectives are in the DDS performance plan? So for your red triangle, if you want to select two, your gold circle, if you want to select seven, your blue diamond, if you want to select five, and your uh, green square, if you want to select four. I'm happy to see all the answers are pouring in pretty quickly. Hopefully, they're the correct answer. <laughs> I'm sure they are. I'm just teasing. Okay, so exactly. There are five objectives in our performance plan. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's see. Oh, melodic camel. Uh, okay, that. That's a, okay, we'll go with that. So the COVID-19 public health emergency has required DDS to change the mission of the agency because, uh, again, your red triangle, the work was never meant to be done remotely. Our gold uh, circle, staff are unable to work at their original work locations. Uh, the blue diamond, IT hasn't provided enough equipment. No offense, IT, I need a response option. And uh, green square, you heard wrong. DDS remains committed to the mission of the agency. Okay, four and in perfectly. Exactly, you heard wrong. DDS remains committed as evidence in the data that we performance reviews on a daily basis and also in just in the, the 
anecdotal um, success stories that we heard in the uh, performance hearing. Oh, melodic camel, we, we're, dynamic seals coming for you. Okay, let's see. True or false? Only district agencies in the health and human services cluster are required to have a performance plan. So for your blue diamond, if that's true, and your red triangle, if that's false. Okay, coming in pretty quickly, perfect. Again, that's false. Every single district agency is required to have a performance plan. Now, the number of KPIs within that plan may fluctuate, but every single agency is required. And if you go to that link in the chat box, you'll see exactly which agencies, um, what agencies are reporting um, what things. And again, our last question. Oh, Dynamic Seal, oh, you're locked in. Okay, let's see if you can bring it home. So what is the KPI? Is it, if you uh, your red triangle, is it a key performance insight? Is it your gold circle a key performance indicator? For your blue diamond, is it a key positive initiative? Or for your green square, is it key personnel intel? And of course, as we know, it is a key performance indicator. So <clears throat> thanks to you all for playing. Everyone's a winner. I believe in participation certificates for everybody, but for those of you who may be a bit more competitive, we can see that our number one winner with five out of five will go to <clears throat> Dynamic Seal. So congratulations. Um, if you want me to know who you are, there may be a, a nice little surprise in it for you. Just chat me your name and performance will get something together for you. So um, that's it. Thank you all for playing. And we definitely want to hand it over back to Derek to get the show back on the road. So thanks, everybody. Awesome. Congratulations to Dynamic Seal. I must admit, those were some great, great nicknames. <laughs> Coming up next, we have another video presentation by Ms. Jacqueline Velez and Brenda Davis. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Velez. I am a bilingual service coordinator. I am honored to be part of service coordination, an integral part of the agency. I have contributed to the success of the agency during this global pandemic by ensuring that families receive quality customer service and advocacy while ensuring inclusion and accessibility. I contributed in the following ways. I participated in sessions with the DDS Language Access Coordinator and other bilingual colleagues to translate ISP documents from English to Spanish. I also participated in the successful second annual DDS Virtual Latino Conference. One of the major contributions was providing daily moral support virtually to persons and primary caregivers in the native language as they receive the news of losing their loved one as a result of COVID-19 or other medical reasons. This pandemic forced us to express our care, dedication, and compassion virtually in a culture that is known for constant human touch. My individual contributions would not have been possible without the support from my supervisor and my colleagues who supported me by listening, checking in, and let's not leave out the text messages with funny emojis that kept me going. In addition to my youngest coworker, my six-year-old son, which was very supportive. Hi, I'm Brenda Davis, and I'm assigned to the RSA Transition Unit. I contribute to the success of the agency by making the DDA application process as user-friendly, seamless, and stress-free as possible. I do this by scheduling meetings on dates and times that are convenient for the individuals, which sometimes mean having meetings after my tour of duty or on my AWS day. I also send information and the application needed to apply for DDA services via mail as requested and have the individuals return the needed forms via taking pictures and texting them back to me. Additionally, I help individuals upon their request complete the DDA applications and forms step by step. Great, thank you so much to Jacqueline and Brenda. Coming up next, we have some performance highlights. We're gonna get started with our HR team presented by Ms. Jessica Gray. Mm 
Good morning, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Derek, for the um, very, very um, good music. I've enjoyed it so far. Thank you, Teresa, for the uh, Zumba. It's been a good morning. Um, continuing, continuing with today's theme, maintaining the mission of the agency, I wanted to share with you all how your HR team has been able to continue to sustain our agency's mission despite the public health emergency. As you know, we are a small team of 10 people managing all of the agency's HR needs. Over the next few, few slides, you will see a summary of the work HR has done over the last calendar year. Uh, thanks to Taj Young, uh, we have processed over 300 personnel actions, including promotions, step increases, uh, orienting and inputting new hires as well as separations. In addition to in addition to processing personnel actions, Taj is also responsible for ensuring all of us get paid 26 pay periods out of the year on time. If you don't know that during the public health emergency, um, OPRS, the Office of Payroll Retirement, has ceased um, supplemental checks. And so if you don't get paid on time, you have to wait until the next pay period. And Taj has done a really good job to make sure that no one has needed to receive a supplemental paycheck during the public health emergency. So thank you, Taj. Uh, thanks to Melanie Buckley, our recruiter, we have filled roughly 30 vacant positions. That includes um, not only filling those positions, but partnering with our managers, to make sure that we're getting the best candidates from the best possible candidate pool. Um, thanks to our FMLA coordinator, Rachel Phillips, we have processed over 83 medical leave applications. That includes FMLA paid family leave and the newly designated COVID sick leave, as well as processing and approving 14 accommodation requests. Our classifier, Fakisha Guy, created seven new position descriptions and recertified 15 position descriptions. She also um, leads our SYEP efforts. And while other DC government agencies were reducing the number of youth they could receive during the public health emergency, we maintained our 13 youth, uh, some of which were in person and some were virtual. And I wanna give a really special thanks to Fakisha for really leading that effort um, despite how challenging it was. Um, we also received four college interns, thanks to our partners in RSA. Um, and thanks to Grace and Matthew, our ASL interpreters, we provided over 1,300 hours, roughly 1,300 hours of sign language interpreting in partnership with our contract providers. We also in, um, provided 129 hours of foreign language translation for our agency clients and translated 53 documents. Andre and Philip, our trainers, facilitated over 200 staff and provider trainings, both virtual and in person. That includes new hire orientation, um, all of the trainings that you've seen since the pandemic started, including uh, managing your stress while teleworking, We've been continuing with our PCT training virtually, thanks to our partners in SAPI, Emily Ornstein. Um, also, Andre has led us to our um, seventh year, seventh consecutive year of meeting our one fund goal, raising over $51,000 this year for DC organizations. Also, a thank you to all of our employees who donated. And a special thank you to our fair share givers. If you don't know, a fair share giver is an employee who donates between one and 3% of their salary to the one fund. Their names are listed there. I won't read them to you, but thank you uh, again. Your donations go very far and a special thank you again to Andre. We have maintained our goal for seven years in a row. And then last, I want to mention that since the public health emergency, the district government has been asked to 
fulfill uh, various needs throughout the city. And as part of filling those needs, we have been asked on several occasions to um, pull some of our employees so that they can provide assistance in those areas and be detailed temporarily to different agencies throughout the city. So I want to thank those employees who willingly um, participated in those details. The first detail was a COVID referral and needs assessment hotline. That, um, that hotline was initiated so that if uh, DC residents needed assistance um, during the public health emergency, they can call this hotline. And we had several employees who participated uh, willingly in that effort. Um, we also had a detail to the Board of Elections who assisted our um, DC residents in registering, I'm sorry, um, voting, working the polls, the day of the election, and providing other assistance to the Board of Elections. And then finally, our uh, details who worked with DC Health in the contract contact trace force core. Again, thank you all for um, your willingness to support DC government in various ways throughout the public health emergency. Um, and that concludes our HR performance highlights. I will kick it over to Bing. Ladies and gentlemen, please bear with us as we may be experiencing a few technical difficulties. Beam will be joining us momentarily. All right, next up we have performance highlights from our IT professional, Mr. Serena Beam. Hello. Hello. We can hear you, Beam. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So we have been working to make sure that all colleagues have access to the technology and to the information you need to complete your day-to-day -day work activities. At the beginning of the pandemic, we are able to transition 350 employees to work remotely, and we increase our VPN usage to 342 people, adding 264 new VPN accounts. During the pandemic, so the, what is the advantages of VPN? There are three advan advantages of VPN. Safeguard your computer and safeguard your district networks. And second one is a backup your Z, Z drive files to the server so that if anything happens to your computer, still you can, you can able to retrieve those files. Third one is the accessing P drive even though you're working from home, you can access P drive if you have a VPN account. These are the three advantages. In the effort to increase the efficiency of your technical skills, IT is providing a training, bi-weekly trainings. So uh, 
we started this uh, three months ago, and we see a lot of advantages of people attending these trainings, and we saw number of tick number of tickets are decreased during the last three months. We provided like a Teams training and VPN training, WebEx, OneNote, and uh, how to manage your cell phones. So we invite uh, these trainings will be occurred uh, by every alternate Tuesdays. The IT will pick a particular topic and will discuss about those topic. And if you have any questions, you can ask in those sessions. And the other session is alternate Thursdays. We'll provide a Q&A session, IT Q&A session. Our DDS staff will be available for your questions and provide a response to your questions and your concerns. And for all these uh, trainings or Q&A sessions, you don't need to register for any training. The link will be available on your team's calendar. Okay, so please make use of these sessions and uh, try to attend these sessions and you can increase your IT skills. And at last, I want to thank my all my IT staff like Byron Brown, who prepares a computer and has come to work almost every day to prepare computer to provide a uh, malfunction computers to you. And Steve, Battleman is all is install the software, or needed software on your computer, and he always updates the DDS content whenever needed. And Clarence Henry who will provide a excellent training to all the DDS staff during the training sessions. And Teresa Shelton will provide an uh, cell phone may how to manage your cell phone and provide demos. If required, and judge young judge will be logging into or remotely logging into a computer and troubleshoot your day to day operations. Lori Chang, so she'll assign help desk tickets timely, assign help desk tickets to all the um, IT staff to complete your complete the tickets, and she'll help to install the WebEx and. Uh, any technical issues, WebEx or contract bridges, so she will pump those. And Brad Hamas is the work with System 7, any issues with the System 7, they'll try to resolve those System 7 issues. And Suresh Montana is working with a, a DDA case management system. If any new additional functionalities are there, he'll make sure that is completed on time. And uh, the last one is the uh, Niraja Kulashetti is a uh, Contract developer, she's working on a new DDA case management system. So, thank you, and I'm handovering to Akima. Thank you, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Say hi and send love to the people, Clark. We did good, didn't we? Yes, we did. <laughs> the providers' relations, financial services, business services, and the waiver unit within operations make a difference in contributing to the success of the agency's mission. We would like to take a brief moment to share with you some of our accomplishments and the great work our operations team is performing during the pandemic's telework environment towards several key performance indicators. The Operations Provider Relations Unit in FY20, we processed, paid, and updated authorizations in System 7, 4,521 items. This amount totaled to $5,282,417. We are continuing that trend in the first quarter of FY21 and have processed, paid, and updated System 7 um, authorizations, 871 of them. The P Operations Provider Relations Unit, we manage over 230 contract agreements and agreements for DDA and RSA. In addition, 
uh, we have processed in FY20 661 payments towards uh, tuition payments that fund higher learning opportunities for those persons that we support. And in the first quarter of FY21, we have now um, paid and processed over 47 post-secondary training opportunities. Next will be Chris, who'll tell you a little bit about our accomplishments in the financial services unit. Good morning, everyone. Thanks, Akima. The fiscal, sir, the fiscal unit maintains all provider budgets which relate to the accommodation needs of the consumers we support. For FY20, we managed 81 provider budgets, which totaled over $29 million. And for the first quarter of FY21, we managed 73 budgets, which totaled over $7 million. These provider budgets also identify each residential location and the cost of each location. For FY20, we budgeted for 632 locations, which totaled over $13 million. For the first quarter of FY21, we budgeted for 625 locations at a cost of over $3 million. Another component of our unit is the ticket to work reimbursement process for BDC beneficiaries. This system monitors our consumer employment outcomes and eligible agency expenses for reimbursement from SSA. Through this program for FY20, we submitted over $300,000 in claims. And in first quarter of FY21, we have submitted over $73,000 in claims for review. Our unit also aids in the process of finalizing consumer moves via the referral process. In FY20, we submitted 408 referrals. And in the first quarter of FY21, we submitted 46 referrals. DDS, as with all other DC agencies, are required to maintain specific percentages of our expenditures with vendors who are designated as small business enterprises. In FY20, our expenditures which were related to small businesses totaled over $6 million. For our current fiscal year, we are awaiting final calculations from DSLBD, but we expect to be on track to meet established goals. Lastly, in FY20, we implemented 90-day renewal notices to aid in the prevention of any lapse of benefits for the consumers we serve. In FY20, we submitted 424 renewal notices for the first quarter of FY21, we have submitted 88 notices. I'm now going to pass our operations presentation on to my colleague, Harrison Castillo. Thank you very much, Chris. My name is Harrison Castillo. I am the business services supervisor uh, for the business services unit. Uh, our unit is responsible for processing invoices for payment under the District of Columbia Prons Payment Program, which also includes uh, Process, uh, processing payments in, in different systems. Now, how did we do uh, in, this, in, in this area? Well, we processed 3,575 invoices uh, in that, and we also, in FY21, now we're processing 829 invoices. Now, we also are responsible for the timely and accurate processes of these invoices. Now, out of 3,575 invoices, we only pay one late invoice and with a penalty of 110. Now, these numbers are great because it, it, during this pandemic and during this period, we, we were processing invoices, uh, the majority of it, about 80% everything virtually. So we're very happy with these numbers. And also we are responsible for uh, processing requisitions. Our, process, our requisitioners process uh, requisitions and, and purchase orders that are also approved, and that includes all the versions, all the changes that are done to these uh, to these purchase orders. And we process 1,009 of these requisitions and approved purchase orders. Now, now this now why is this uh, these numbers significant? Well, we process, and last year we processed about 252 uh, requisitions per quarter. Now, in FY21, how do we improve from that? Well, we are already 78% more per quarter than last year uh, at 451 requisitions only in one quarter. And so kudos to our requisitions team for all the hard work that they do. 
Now, Business Services is also responsible for uh, processing Medicaid and Social Security mail. Uh, so our uh, so our team at the Medical Waiver Unit can also update the file and be able to uh, handle all everything for the good and wellness of our clients. So we process in FY20 3,732. Um, Medicaid and Social Security mail open and process and send to the medical waiver unit. Now, the FY21, we are in target. We are we are already processed 933 for the first quarter in FY21. And I'm going to pass this over to my colleague at the medical waiver unit, um, Ms. Pamela Harmon. Thank you, Harrison. Good morning to everyone. In keeping with the key performance metrics performed by the Medicaid waiver unit, the first one that I'd like to discuss is Medicaid billing and prior authorization inquiries. And these are inquiries that are handled through our waiver unit using the electronic billing and technical assistance system. And so in FY20, we processed 582 billing and prior authorization inquiries. And in the first quarter of FY21, 101. And this uh, electronic billing and technical assistance system is managed by Maurice Davis and the waiver unit. Medicaid recertification applications are also processed in our unit, in the Medicaid waiver unit. And in FY20, um, we processed 1,830 renewal applications that um, were sent over to ESA. And we also updated the renewal dates in MCIS for the 1,830 applicants. And in FY21, 458 updates. Waiver services authorized to the tune of 11,420 for FY20, and in FY21, 2,454. We also updated in the waiver unit the personal accounts for people that we serve. We update this information in MCIS, and in FY20, 14,731 updates were performed, and in FY21, 3,000. 625. As we also updated the burial accounts in MCIS in the waiver unit for 10,688 people. Um, and in FY21, 2,580 updates were performed at MCIS. So as you can see, the work that's done um, by Herson's team with opening the mail. Um, it really pays off. We're able to perform the updates in MCIS for um, Medicaid. We're also able to get our renewal applications in and do the work that is so critically important to our agency. At this time, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Crystal Thomas in the Office of Policy Planning and Innovation. All right. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela and operations uh, for that presentation. And thank you, Teresa, so much. I haven't had a drop of coffee this morning or caffeine, so I really appreciate it, that early morning Zumba. Um, so I just wanted to give a snapshot of SAPI's performance highlights. And um, before I kick it off, I wanted to thank the entire DDS uh, team uh, during this time. You know, usually in the office, we're able to just do stop and chats and stop by someone's desk to get any updates. Um, and so the flexibility in this virtual space, I have been so impressed and just very grateful for everyone just responding very quickly, either through email or Teams. So I wanted to thank you everyone for making um, our lives 
easier at Sapi um, from Sapi. And also shout out my um, entire Rockstar Sapi team for all of their efforts during this time. So I will uh, transition into this presentation. Um, in terms of our performance highlights, we launched the IFS Individual Family Support Waiver, as well as the IDD um, amendment back in November. And so I'm giving virtual high fives to Chanel Parkar for all of her hard work with the IFS waiver. Um, just some of the um, uh, just highlights of, of the IFS waiver. It's capped at 75,000. Um, very similar to our IDD waiver, um, except that we've added a service um, of educational supports and it supports individuals um, in their natural home. Uh, some of the highlights for our IDD amendment include assistive technology, where we've added a list of allowable assistive um, technology items. Some systemic changes to our waiver includes uh, changing our 72 hour reporting of SRIs to three business days. Next slide. During this time, um, we have to quickly remind folks that folks with disabilities have the same rights as, as anyone else. And um, Emily Ornstein really helped with providing um, materials, leading discussions with our self advocates and other network um, uh, partners to facilitate discussions on understanding COVID. Um, knowing your rights during the public health emergency and balancing rights and risk. Uh, during this time, we've, uh, we've, of course, we're in a virtual space, so stakeholder engagement is so important. Um, we've partnered with DC Health for our weekly forums, which began almost a year ago. Uh, we have approximately 200 folks that participate every week. Also, as many of you know, we have our employee forums every Friday, excuse me, every first Friday of the month where we have an average of 150 employees attending. We continue to move um, and move our, our initiative for technology first forward. Uh, so stay tuned. We, we definitely have a couple of um, deliverables uh, that we hope to launch in the near future. So I wanted to shout out Donald Clark for all of his hard work. Uh, he's probably reached out to some of you guys in regards to this um, tech first initiative. We have our remote supports training that's launching very soon, as well as the enabling technology um, accreditation program. So most of you received or all of you received an invitation for our survey and the purpose of our PCO survey was to gain insight um, and view the possibilities of how DDS may act on um, information pertaining to customer focus, learning and knowledge management, leadership effectiveness, uh, business processes. And um, I will share um, our findings in just the next few slides. So some of our opportunities um, are in three areas. We have um, learning and knowledge management, leadership and employee focus, which is a great opportunity uh, for further person-centered efforts and further increased satisfaction within the organization. So this isn't in particular to any particular uh, unit or administration. We're looking at DDS overall. Um, the survey also, uh, the findings were uh, definitely a lot of strengths with DDS leadership. Um, 
There's strong collaboration with partnerships, community organizations, um, customer focus, uh, understanding how we, um, what is important to people with disabilities, um, as well as people with disabilities and family members providing valuable service. Um, and also, um, the strength was supporting people with disabilities uh, to actively engage. So, in continuation with strengths, um, business processes, we we continue to find that, um, or we find found that strategic planning um, and goals was a strength, as well as the organization's mission, uh, promoting practices to support people with disability, and um, our processes to meet the expectations of people with disabilities was also a strength. Um, in addition to that, uh, we continue to um, evaluate uh, performance regularly, um, as well as uh, valuing partnerships and collaboration. So again, thank you uh, to the 102 folks who participated in our PCO survey. And now we will listen to our PCO coaches uh, in the video. Hello, we are a few of the person centered thinking trainers for the agency. We represent a range of units within DDS which add to the fun of working together. We proudly commit to training, in addition to our core responsibilities to our respective units. And we contribute to the success of the agency by making sure all our colleagues, service providers, clinicians, and other community members know that person-centered means so much more than paperwork and compliance with policy. Through our monthly virtual classes, we strive to encourage and guide provisions that support positive control and self-direction of people's own lives. For us, person-centered thinking is a way of life and informs our view of the world. Training is a great opportunity to share your expertise, build community, and develop as a professional. If you are interested in joining our team, let us know. Wow. Awesome job to our PCT trainers. Thank you guys so much. I really love that the throwback with a nod to the Brady Bunch. That was really creative, guys. Thank you all so much. Coming up next, we have more performance highlights from DDA presented by Ms. Robin Exton. Hello, everybody. I'm Robin Exton, Supervisory Service Coordinator within DDA. I want to thank everyone for working so hard. Um, and I also want to share some of the performance highlights. Number of people supported. DDA managed workloads during the public health emergency that were on par with the people supported in prior performance years. FY18, we supported 2,450 people. FY19, we supported 2,491 people. And FY20, we supported 2,409 people. Employment outcomes. People supported by our agency expressing an interest in employment work with their service coordinators to develop person-centered goals focused on successful employment outcomes. For FY20, 418 people are employed and 190 people have performance employment goals. 
completion rates. In the face of a pandemic, staff maintained the measures of success regarding intake, completion of ISPs, closing investigations, and conducting health reviews. Below is a three-year comparison. In FY18, 91 people were found eligible for supports. In FY19, 99 people were found eligible for supports. And in FY20, 77 people were found eligible for supports. FY18, 2,224 ISPs were completed. And FY19, 2,372 ISPs were completed. And FY20, 2,378 ISPs was completed. Go service coordinators. And investigations closed. 1,338 were closed in FY18. 1,229 were closed in FY19. And 1,175 were closed in 2020. IMEU, you rock. Health reviews. In FY18, we had 1,447 health reviews completed. In FY19, there was 1,392 health reviews completed. And oh my goodness, in FY20, there was 3,105 health reviews completed. Oh my goodness, great work, everybody. Okay. Um, in March the 11th, 2020, the public health emergency was declared. DDS continued to work closely with the Department of Healthcare Finance to adjust the cadre of services. We also worked with DC Health on mitigation strategies, personal protective equipment, testing efforts, and vaccine distribution. We also worked closely with Behavioral Health, the Department of Behavioral Health, on resources to support adjustment to this extraordinary time. Authorization adjustments were made to provide alternatives to services no longer available because of the public health emergency, approximately 800 people. DDS maintained regular communication with DC Health as guidance was issued and reported out daily on the impact the public health emergency had on people supported. Online applications was processed for new intakes for DDA and RSA with staff responding rapidly to support people seeking to apply. Health and wellness trainings. A COVID-19-101 guide for providers was designed to help decrease the anxiety or fear for providing care to someone who might have the virus and how to present, prevent it. COVID-19 hygiene and PPE usage when returning to work during phase three will be available for staff who will return to the office and are required to wear personal protective equipment. COVID-19, a resource for DSPs providing care to people with intellectual and developmental disabilities presented at the DSP Academy is ongoing and is available. Coping with COVID for staff and provider and community stakeholders featuring national experts on trauma-informed care is coming soon. The impact of the pandemic. From the onset of the virus to date, 409 people supported by our agency have contracted the virus, and sadly, 36 have died. Thank you so much, and I'd like to thank everyone for their continued hard work. Thank you. Thank you so much to Robin Exton. Coming up next, we have a, a video on vaccination followed by a presentation on vaccinations and the COVID-19 outbreak presented by Mr. Michael Spiegelman. Most vaccines are given with a needle shot in the arm. 
Some can be taken orally or through a nose spray. All of them help you remain healthy and strong. Well, vaccines teach your immune system how to respond to a threat. So if you're exposed to a virus, the body's natural defenses can fight it off. That protection against the virus is called immunity. Right now, acquiring immunity is so important. The world is in the middle of a deadly pandemic, the largest one since 1918. More than 1 million people across the planet have died, and nearly 500,000 in the U.S. The COVID-19 vaccine protects you from getting sick. And along with protocols like wearing a mask and keeping six feet away from people you don't live with, will help bring an end to the pandemic. And if sometime after receiving your vaccine, you do get COVID-19, your recovery will be much quicker than it would have been had you not been vaccinated. It's simple. Vaccines are an important part of keeping us healthy. So be sure to get yours. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'll have a presentation on the vaccine and COVID-19 information presented by Mr. Michael Spiegelman. Good morning, everyone. Again, I'm Michael Siegelman, the nurse educator in the Health and Wellness Unit. Let's continue talking about some important information about vaccines. <clears throat> so what does a vaccine do? Well, it stimulates the body to produce different types of white blood cells or antibodies to fight off specific diseases. This protects you from getting sick by boosting your immunity. Once you're immune, you can be exposed to a disease and potentially not get sick. Vaccines are typically given by needle injection in the arm. However, some can be taken by mouth or sprayed into the nose. At this time, neither of the two COVID-19 vaccines are administered any other way except by needle injection. Vaccines can eradicate disease. As we see here from the years 2000 to 2017, the measles vaccine prevented over 21.1 million child deaths. Because of vaccines, smallpox has completely been erased. And in 1921, 15, more than 15,000 Americans died from diphtheria. Only two cases have been reported between 2004 and 2014. That's as a result of vaccines. In 1963, an epidemic of rubella or German measles infected 12.5 million Americans, killed 2,000 babies, and caused 11,000 miscarriages. As a result of vaccines, since 2012, only 15 cases of rubella were reported in DC, excuse me, uh, to CDC. Sorry. Uh, vaccines protect us and others. Increasing immunization across the world could save 1.5 million people each year. Uh, according to Anthony Fauci, the director of um, the NAIAD at the Department on Health and Human Services, hundreds and hundreds of millions of lives have been saved as a result of vaccines. According to this data from CDC, the most vaccine preventable diseases are spread from person to person. So if one person in a community gets an infectious disease, that person can, can spread it to others who are not immune. However, if a person who is immune to a disease because they've been vaccinated, uh, they are far, likely, far less likely to get that disease and can't spread it to others. Now let's talk about the COVID-19 vaccine. It's called an mRNA vaccine or a messenger RNA vaccine. This vaccine has a protein in it that the body responds to as if it was COVID-19. The vaccine does not have any virus in it. 
The vaccines uh, I'm talking about for now are the two vaccines, Pfizer and Moderna. Both have up to 95% effectiveness in preventing COVID-19. The studies with placebo and actual vaccine groups showed evidence supporting that the uh, supporting the vaccine's effectiveness. Placebo recipients in the study were seen to have the most negative outcomes between the two groups. The COVID-19 vaccine will not give you COVID-19. It's protection from the virus for you and for others. It also does not affect or interact with our DNA in any way. So, uh, as of, I believe this was Monday night or Tuesday morning when we gathered this data, over the last seven days, 730 new cases of the virus have been reported in DC. Across the US, the average daily rate of a new case over the last seven days was 19.4 per 100,000 people. Things are improving, but we're not out of danger or risk yet. So the plan for the public to get protection, DC has a multi-layered approach to vaccinate residents and employees. Currently, we are in phase 1B tier 3. The next phase is 1C tier 1. And for detailed phases and who, uh, um, who is included in each phase in each tier, please be sure to visit coronavirus.dc.gov for much more information. Now let's talk about uh, vaccinations around the world. Locally, we see that in DC, 164,207 doses have been given. In Maryland, 1,111,529 vaccine doses have been given. In Virginia, 1,735,000 451 vaccine doses have been given. And in the US total, 64,177,474 COVID vaccine doses have been given. Worldwide, we see that 206 million doses have been given, spanning 92 countries. So you may ask, why do we need two shots? The first shot helps your body recognize the virus and gets your immune system essentially ready to fight that virus. The second, the second shot strengthens your immune response, so makes your response even stronger. The vaccines that require two shots often have different dosing schedules, and those can be separated by weeks or by months all depends on the vaccine. If you received your first vaccine already, but you missed your second appointment, you should get the shot as soon as possible. And even if you received the second shot late, uh, you may not have to repeat the first one. Always check with your medical provider for more information on what you should do next. So what types of reactions should you expect? Well, remember that each person and each body is different and respond, could respond differently. You probably hear uh, about issues or concerns in the news, but know that allergic reactions are rare. Keep this in mind, if you've ever had a negative reaction to any vaccine, you should not take the COVID-19 vaccine. Always talk with your doctor to find out next steps if you have any concerns or any questions. And if you have seasonal or environmental allergies, and that would include pets, latex, medicines such as penicillin or aspirin, uh, an allergy to insect bites or stings, those should not stop you from getting the vaccine. 
And again, when in doubt, talk with your doctor. So what happens after you get the vaccine? Well, as CDC, DC Health, and the news have all expressed, for now, not a lot is going to change in our lives. You should continue to wear a mask. You should continue to wash your hands. And remember, the proper amount of time to wash your hands is the, the time it takes to sing happy birthday twice. Be sure to wash your hands with warm, soapy water or use hand sanitizer when appropriate. And again, hand sanitizer for the length of time that it takes to sing happy birthday twice. And be sure to social distance. That means staying six feet away from anyone that you don't live with. And we should continue uh, with a healthy lifestyle or adopt a healthier lifestyle. Get plenty of sleep, limit your alcohol, be sure to stop smoking. Eat healthy, talk with your doctor and follow your doctor's advice about your exercise regimen and routine, and always drink water. I wanna thank you all so much for your time. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and learned something new and remember, get your vaccine. Thank you. Awesome job, Michael. Thank you so much. As I sit here and read many of the comments, everyone's saying that it's been very helpful and very informative. So again, thank you so much, Michael, for such great information. Coming up next, we have two videos, one by Ms. Gladys Gonzalez, followed by a video of Ms. Marquita Styler. And then Marquita will give a presentation on work and life balance. In that order, once again, we have a video for Ms. Gladys Gonzalez, followed by a video of Marquita Sala, and then a presentation on work-life balance presented by Marquita Sala. Hello, I'm Gladys Gonzalez, VR counselor from the General VR Unit in RSA. I contribute to the success of the agency by making sure that individuals receive adequate information, customer service, and counseling and guidance throughout the VR process. I do this by sharing what RSA's purpose is and explaining the services that individuals have access to. I assess what additional resources the individual may need, such as access to food bank information, housing resources, and other DC community resources. In order to look at the person holistically and assess how to move forward with their vocational goal. If an individual needs access to a resource that RSA does not directly assist with, then I'll do research for them, especially if the person does not know how to find the information themselves or are not tech savvy. For example, if they need access to food bank information, otherwise they may not be able to focus on applying to jobs if they're not properly fed. Another thing that's important is to check in with the individuals on a regular basis and offer support needed. Hello, my name is Marquita Siler Tyler, and I'm the Certified Benefit Specialist here for the Department of Disability Services, Rehabilitation Services Administration. It is my job to help our consumers that are receiving Social Security benefits to understand how pursuing employment with our agency may impact those benefits. It's also my job to help them understand any work incentives that can help safeguard those benefits while they try to go back to work. I also provide our consumers with financial literacy so that they can achieve their best possible financial outcome. Knowledge is power. So it is my job to empower our consumers to live their best life. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'll have a presentation presented again by Ms. Marquita Siler. Hi, everybody. I'm Marquita Siler Tyler, Certified Benefit Specialist, also Certified Corporate Wellness Specialist and Advanced Mind Body Medicine Practitioner. Hi, hope you are having a great day. And we're going to get into this presentation on strategies for achieving work-life balance. The first thing that you need to be aware of 
is that I realize that everybody is working from home, but we have to build a barrier between your home and your work life. First is instituting mandatory break times. It's important to set an alert on your watch or your computer to remind you to get up and take a break. You have to break up that work day. You can't sit at your desk all day, even if you are in the house. Also, take a short walk outside and get some fresh air. If you're walking with another person, don't talk about work. It's important that you have that space, that you're not letting those two things overlap. Next, it's good to have a non-negotiable cutoff time. I realize you're at home, you can get caught up with what you're doing, and you can forget that I need to stop. So when possible, set an absolute time to end your workday. While the virtual world makes it hard to not take work home, have a designated area in your house that you can kind of close off everything else and just focus on your task at hand. After hours, close that space off and then get into your home life. And unless your job requires you to keep your cell phone on, turn your cell phone off and don't answer any work emails until the next business day. Have some built in me time and some built in family time for your time. Take time to decompress from your work day. Make it a ritual. If you are married or have children or a significant other, let them know that you need at least 30 minutes for yourself for you to transition. Okay, you have to have that little time in between set and protect this time. Go re energize yourself. Take a shower, get a glass of wine, get some tea, whatever makes you relax and then transition into your family time. You'll see it's gonna make a big difference. When you get into your family time, don't talk about work, close that door. Engage in the necessary fun activities with your family. Talk to them about how their day went, go with homework, dinner, whatever it is, but make sure you keep your home and your work life separate. And then when you return to work the next day, make sure you keep all of your home life issues on the back burner and focus on the task that's in front of you. Maintain a positive outlook as much as possible. Next, self-care is a superpower. If you've been watching TV lately, I know I have, there are all these great new superheroes, Black Lightning and Supergirl and Batwoman. Everybody's coming out the woodwork. Well, you are a superhero as well. And self-care is your superpower. For those in the social service industry, we have a tendency to take care of everybody but ourselves. You make self-care your kryptonite. You don't take care of yourself, but you take care of everybody else. And when you do that, you can burn yourself out quickly. Follow the airplane rule. If you get on a flight, the first thing they're going to tell you is if that oxygen mask comes down, put it on yourself first. And they tell you that because if you don't take care of yourself first, you're going to pass out. And then how are you going to help anyone else? You can't. So make sure you apply those same rules to your life. Keep calm and learn to say no. A lot of us, especially if we have big hearts, we think that saying no is a four letter word. It's not. It's a two letter word and it's very easy to say no. Sometimes we feel like if we say no, we can't do something. We're letting people down. Don't let yourself down because you have to come first. You have to. So if you're gonna keep burning yourself out, given all that you have, eventually you're gonna be on empty. And make sure you get a lot of sleep. You need to do that, okay? Take a good nap. I love naps. When you're a kid, they have to make you take one, but when you become an adult, kind of rare. Getting good sleep helps you be able to move on to whatever it is you have to do. If you don't get sleep, you might as well be driving while under the influence. You're outside riding around with no fuel in your tank. So get a good nap that helps your memory, it helps you focus, and it just helps you feel better. And make sure that you fill up on good fuel. Now, I'm not talking about gas. We know how to take care of our car. We go get oil changes and we do all of this stuff. Some people take better care of their cars than they do their bodies. Take care of your body as well. Give yourself premium fuel, green leafy vegetables, proteins, things that are going to translate into energy and not sugar. That makes the difference between soaring and crashing. And lastly, Surround yourself with things that make you feel better. 
I love candles because aromatherapy can change your mood. You can find it in bath products. Then you can find it in, like I said, candles or oils. Take a warm bath and combine that with hydrotherapy. It'll make a big difference. A couple of scents you might want to check out are Ylang Ylang, which eases anxiety. Sandalwood, which combats depression. Peppermint, which can soothe tension headaches. Now, if you put any essential oils on your body, make sure they're not therapeutic grade because that can be too overpowering and too strong and you can have a negative impact. Jasmine produces relaxing euphoric effects and chamomile, which can be found in a lot of teas, can help you relax. Also, turn a little bit of music on while you do this. Teresa already had us up and moving this morning with some energizing music, but if you want to lay down and relax a little bit, good nature sounds like oceans and lakes and babbling brooks. Those kind of things can help you relax as well. Or you might want a little meditative music, a little spa music, a little jazz. Whatever you're feeling like or whatever you feel you need to boost your mood, there's a song for that. Derek has shown us that because he's been playing great songs all morning. Good job, Derek. Okay, so that's it, you guys. And I hope that these tips were helpful for you. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Awesome, John. Thank you so much, Marquita. Those were some very, very great tips. Again, as I sit here and look at all of the, the different comments in the comment section, People are really appreciating the information that you've just given us. Coming up next to the stage, we have a video presentation presented by the RSA Sensory Unit at this time. Good morning, esteemed colleagues. We are honored to have this opportunity to speak with you today. Today's town hall focuses on maintaining the mission. During our short video, we're hoping that our takeaways demonstrate how we came together during these difficult times and through creativity and innovative ways overcome various obstacles at home and within the workplace. I strongly believe we all have learned from these experiences. According to the first law in Newton of motion, a body in motion typically stays in motion unless acted upon by some outside force. In our case, that outside force is COVID-19. However, as employees, as colleagues, as part of our community, we dealt with these difficult challenges together and consistently maintained the mission. And I believe we're going to continue to move forward. Forward always. Forward is a guide dog command to initiate the process of moving forward. A couple of years ago, Australia, my previous guide dog, and I participated in a half marathon. When we reached mile nine, which was the absolute most grueling, challenging mile for me, I was so tired, I wanted to give up. I sat down on the side of the road just to take a couple minutes rest. But Austria, she did not sit down. She stood beside me with her eyes and her nose focused in the direction of the finish line. She stamped her feet. She did not want to quit. She did not want to rest. She wanted to keep going. Austria inspired me to keep going. In much the same way, we inspire our clients to reach their objectives and accomplish their goals. That day, Austria taught me an incredible and valuable life lesson. No matter what the circumstances, the challenges, or the obstacles. In order to reach our objectives and accomplish our goals, we must keep moving forward, always. Allie, forward. Oh, four. F. Focus. The segment is on the donut center tool that focuses a knowledge of what is within or outside of our sense of control and focusing on things that are within our power to change. <laughs> Pa 
part of maintaining the mission is to focus and to be aware of our ability to control rather than worrying about things that are outside of our control. Although 2020 has presented with unique challenges, we continue to move forward with the day-to-day -day tasks of working with our clients and facilitating strong relationships with each other, our colleagues, and the community. Oh, obstacles and opportunities. My toilet paper. My goodness. Okay. Help, help. Who's here? Well, the truth is the pandemic has brought with it many unforeseen circumstances. But as John Maxwell says, change is inevitable, but growth is optional. As for my colleagues and I, at RSA Sensory Unit, we choose growth. And as a result, we have grown to be better, more capable and stronger counselors who are serving the needs of our community at DCRSA. R, remember to stay in step. You may have noticed that some things have definitely changed over the last few months. Let's think about that for a moment. What has changed for each of us? I think we've all had to discover our new normal. But my R in forward refers to remember to stay in step. So staying in step is an orientation and mobility term. And it involves walking with a white cane and a certain rhythm to make sure you keep yourself safe. And we've all had to discover our new rhythms for dealing with working from home. And I think we've been experienced some positive changes as a result. We found that we can do things virtually that we thought we needed to do in person. I think we have learned a lot of new things. There may have been some trying times and maybe some stumbling, but I think we've all learned to adapt. The good thing is that adaptation results in learning and growth, and we've all improved as a result. W, what is your why? Our why is to empower our clients to tap into their abilities and to achieve their goals because we recognize their potential and see what they have to offer and in various facilities of their lives. Finding your clients why is one of the most important parts of the counseling process. Knowing your why is a motivating factor to work hard for what you want. When we help others find their lives, we see firsthand how their passion drives them to success. A action plan. Hey, Candace. Hey, Emily, what's going on? I'm just making an action plan. I'm an action plan to figure out where we're going. Yogi Berra once said, if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace else. We make action plans because what we can see in the immediate present controls what we cannot see in our future. Action plans provide structure and accountability. You know, Benjamin Franklin once said that if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Part of our performance management is developing an action plan listing specific and measurable goals so that we can reach our objectives. Wow, that is so true. Action plans really do help us get from where we are to where we want to be. Absolutely. Or rerouting. Rerouting 
In orientation and mobility, you would develop a plan to get from where you are to a specific destination. Sometimes when you're starting your route to get to that destination, you encounter obstacles that cause you to reroute. We have all needed to monitor ourselves and ask, is this really working for me? As counselors, we use the person-centered tool, what's working and what's not working when communicating with our clients to monitor their obstacles and their successes. We must do the same with ourselves as counselors to assess ourselves on our feelings and thoughts towards situations and reroute when necessary. It is important to be flexible when rerouting because that is the key to success. D, destination. In orientation and mobility, in order to get somewhere, you first need to know where you are, where you're going, and how to get there. Remembering to stay six feet apart. It's important for us as counselors to be aware of where the client is now and what they want to achieve so that we can adequately develop a plan for how to reach their desired destination. The vocational goal is listed on the IPE so that the destination of the counseling process is always in mind when working with clients. Once a client reaches their destination, it's only the beginning of the opportunities that await them. As a unit, we strive to celebrate the accomplishments of our clients who reach their destinations and move forward into gainful employment. So as we go through our personal and professional life circumstances, please keep these rules of thought in mind. One, be flexible and compassionate towards ourselves and others. Two, be empathetic towards ourselves and others. Three, no one is out and should not stand alone. And four, reach out for support to others as you need. So I'm hoping that we will see each other again at the job site. Uh, meanwhile, just stay positive and stay safe. We have moved into a new normal and a brand new year. As our agency, let's continue maintaining the mission and keep moving forward always. Wow, awesome job. We wanna send a big thank you and a big shout out to the sensory unit for such an inspiring and creative video, guys. Thank you so much. Coming up next, we have RSA and DDD highlights presented by Mr. Daryl Evans. Yes, I would be remiss to not say thank you to um, everyone for all the continued hard work and perseverance through this public health emergency. Um, I also want to thank uh, Dr. Reese. Daryl, we can't really hear you. Okay, let me see if I can. Is this any better? Any Try better? now. Okay, how about now? Yep, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sorry, so I, I guess I, I wanted to say, you know, a huge thank you to all the DDS employees. Um, I think just this reflection of the performance um, has just spoken. All of you have put in day in and day out to make sure the people that we support get what they need to survive and thrive in this unprecedented time. Um, so thank you to all the DDS. Uh, I'd also like to thank um, Director Reese for his leadership throughout. Um, I think you know some of the things that he's instituted, he's worked with the town halls, the Friday calls, you know, constant engagement with staff. Um, it's it's just been overwhelmingly helpful to everyone on Zoom. We're not in offices and, and it's kind of isolating um, not to be able to walk to someone's office and say hi and walk by and see how people are doing. So, with that, I hope everyone is really healthy and safe and in good spirits. Uh, Sorry, Daryl, still having trouble. Still, let me let me move to my phone and then see if that's better. Thank you. I'm 
I really just wanted more of this song. <laughs> Okay, Derek, you can you hear me? Sounding much better. Try now. Okay. Let me let me do this from my phone. Okay. Is that better now? Yes. Okay. So I, I hope that you were able to hear what I was saying, but I was really just thanking everyone for all of their hard work and diligence throughout this pandemic. Um, I think the performance presentation so far really reflected the hard work, dedication, and diligence of everyone in the agency. Um, and I just wanted to thank Director Reach for his continued leadership. Um, you know, these virtual town halls, the Friday meetings, um, the Friday meetings with all employees. It just speaks volumes of the collaborative efforts that have been going on and the positive outcomes that have been taking place during FY20 and into 21. Um, I want to give a special shout out to all of the RSA staff. I'm extremely humbled and proud of the work that you've done um, transitioning to a virtual platform. Um, the numbers as I go through them fairly quickly, because I know I'm kind of at the tail end and I don't want to keep people. Um, I'm, I just can't get over the way that you've all come together, worked hard and, and, and put these numbers in place for us. So over FY20, um, RSA provided services and supports to 6,069 persons. Um, also in FY20, we successfully helped 524 people get, obtain competitive integrated employment. Um, this was a um, huge accomplishment given that we revised the goal from 675 originally to 500, 554 due to COVID and making sure that the expectations on staff were realistic, you know, obviously during the public health emergency. So with the revised goal of 554, we successfully helped 524 people successfully um, obtain competitive integrative employment. So that's a huge kudos to all the staff that put forth the effort to make sure we were giving people supports. Um, of those 524 people we successfully, that we helped successfully obtain employment, 429 of those folks um, obtained employment in the high demand fields. And for us, you can see on the, the um, point for point that, that those industries are hospital, hospitality, culinary, business IT, customer service, transportation, healthcare, security, and law enforcement, construction, and infrastructure. So those are the things that we consider high demand fields. And then 95 people um, found employment in, you know, business, education, and home services. And really what is, is really inspiring to our folks is that the average hourly wage was $17.63. Okay. Um, next, I'd like to highlight our um, 
transit pre ETS and transitional youth units. Um, again, another outstanding job of reaching students in this virtual platform that we um, are, are existing in. Um, we did a very quick pivot in March to really get counselors engaged with students to make sure that they were getting the supports that they need. And I'm proud to say that in FY20, uh, we, along with our LEAs, which are our local education agencies, were able to provide supports and services for 3,500 students. Um, 3,088 of those students attended DCPS, uh, public charter schools, they reached 2,487 students and other non-public um, schools reached 190 students. So again, that is just a huge compliment to staff staying engaged, helping you, you, youth, you know, obtain the uh, job readiness and soft skills that they're going to need to obtain competitive integrated employment. So again, very proud of, of the RSA units. Um, so thank you, RSA. And now I'm going to move into DDD and just a huge kudos to DDD. Again, um, we had a little bit of a leg up in DDD because we've moved, we were the pilot program for SSA to do virtual uh, work. And we had kind of been in the posture in, in some form for the last year or two. And so when we went to a virtual platform, DDG just continued the excellence in, in productivity. For FY20, we were able to successfully adjudicate Title II and Title 16 SSI and SSDI disability claims. And we did that successfully for 22,095 people and our expected goal was around 20,095. So, you know, that, that speaks volumes of being in a virtual platform and then still being able to engage medical staff, get medical records, engage clients to the extent that they would need to get further information and or set up virtual CEs. It's another uh, proud accomplishment for DDD that I wanted to just mention. And we were also able to keep a quality rating of 96.2% which was second in the region. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention our productivity was number one in the mid Atlantic region. So please give yourselves a big round of applause as I will be doing um, every day, just to thank you for your work. Um, and I think with that, that, that kind of closes it out for RSA and DDD. But again, I just wanted to say thank you to all of DDS for your continued efforts and hard work to get supports in place for the people that we support. Thank you. Awesome job. Thank you so much, Mr. Daryl Evans and the entire team of the RSA and DDD team. Coming up next, we have another Kahoot exercise presented by Ms. Charlotte and Michael. Hey, morning, good morning. Morning. Yes, so, so enamored and amazed by um, the work of our agency. And again, on behalf of the performance management team to include Edward Bynum, Corey Niels, Andy Andrea Andwandro, Elijah Bell Clark, Curtis uh, McLean, and Elijah, and uh, Corey Niels, I'm sorry, I probably missed, and um, I'm sorry, Holly, Maurice Holly. Um, we really do appreciate the opportunity to participate in this effort, knowing that, um, we are here to just help track and report as much of the great work that you all are doing. And I know managers have already reached out to us to kind of identify some additional objectives and KPIs that we can use to monitor the changes. So uh, we're here to continue to collaborate and, and continue to highlight the great work that you all have been doing. So moving back on to Kahoot, I see people are still logging in. Um, and I'm joined with uh, Michael Siegelman, our nurse educator. So again, just like before, you're gonna log into www.kahoot.it. That's K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T. And when prompted, you're going to enter the game pin 744-5432 uh, so that we can kind of get back into what we're presenting as a wrap-up session. Not so much as the question and answer as before, but just to really get uh, your reactions and your sentiments now after we've just been um, presented with such a great, great amount of information that, that's really valuable and helps us to put it all together. You know, we kind of work in our own units. But to see it all come together this way is a special 
um, kudos to the whole town hall planning team for how this came together. So again, for Kahoot, it's www.kahoot.it. Uh, that's K A H O O T dot I T, and that game pin is seven four four five four three two. I see the number of participants have stayed around that 300, 350 mark. So thank you all for staying plugged in and tuned in to what we are presenting. Um, the numbers are still climbing in as people are uh, logging in and getting uh, up to speed. Again, for those who may just be coming back to their computers. You want to go to www.kahoot.it, that's K-A-H-O-O-T.it, and that game pin is 744-5432. Hope you all are enjoying this. Uh, this really has been a, a really good way to kind of summarize information and uh, present it in a different way. And I know uh, Jocelyn, the public information office, may send out another kind of wrap-up survey, but this is another really interactive way to gain feedback in real time. So I'm going to wait till we get to maybe about 120 people, knowing that some people will still join in as um, their technology and time allows. So again, that's www.kahoot.it. That's K-A-H-O-O-T.it. And the game pin is 744-5432. Just give it about maybe 30 more seconds. You may not have the same nickname as you were before, so hopefully you didn't get too attached. Um, Elated McCall, that, that's that's a good one. I'm not even gonna, uh, not to show favorites, but that's a good one. Um, okay, so we've been around 115, 116, we need a couple more people, and then we'll just get started knowing that uh, time is of the essence, and I wanna give you all back as much time as we can in the day. So knowing that people will still join, we'll get started, and Michael, I will hand it off to you if you want to, I'll drive if you want to just read the questions. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Michael Siegelman again. So this one is going to be a word cloud. You're going to type in your answer. The question is, what word best describes your approach to supporting the mission of DDS? Again, what word best describes your approach to supporting the mission of DDS? You're going to click on the um, part of your screen that says players type your answer. Type your answer there, hit enter, and we should be seeing uh, answers pop up. We are at 57, 61 now, great. Um, a reminder again, if you're still clocking in or still signing in, it's kahoot.it. Game pin 744-5432. Great. We're at 100 answers so far. Charlotte, are we going to read some of these or what? Uh, uh, yeah, so there, there are a couple more coming in, so we're going to give a couple more seconds for them to sure. populate. But yeah, as soon as we get them in, we'll just see what we have. Here we go. So again, you know the size of the uh, block will will align with the number of people who have uh, selected that response. So yeah, dedication, compassion, person-centered, independence, teamwork, customer service, focus on the mission, um, empathy, optimistic. Optimism is is key for me, uh, and I'm sure it is for a lot of you all. In the time that we're in, it's important to keep that cheerful and optimistic spirit as we go through our personal and professional life. So. This is awesome. Um, Mike, you want to take the next question or how do you want to? It's up to you. Sure. Yep, I'm ready. Okay, this one ahead. is this one is a poll. During this town hall, I learned more about topics that are interesting to me. And this is the same as the Kahoot that Charlotte did a little while ago. You're going to click the red or the triangle for yes, the gold or the circle for yes, but we needed more time the blue or the diamond for no, and the uh, green or the square for no, there are other equally important topics of interest to me. So again, during this town hall, I learn more about topics that are interesting to me. Yes, red triangle. Yes, but we needed more time uh, was the gold or circle. 
no is the blue or the diamond and the no there are other equally important topics of interest to me is green or square oh and we already have 125 answers fantastic yeah this is really awesome feedback okay so let's just see where we ended up perfect majority of people said yes they learn more about topics that are interesting to me so this is that's awesome feedback and uh, we we are yeah, it's it's good to know that we're presenting uh, information that's meaningful and we continue to look forward to opportunities to share information in real time that make a difference. So, perfect. Uh, for question three, another poll, uh, I feel more knowledgeable to perform my job successfully. So, I feel more knowledgeable to perform my job successfully. The red triangle for yes, uh, kind of that gold or yellow circle for no. Uh, blue is the diamond for somewhat, and a green square for no change. Again, I feel more knowledgeable to perform my job successfully. Uh, that red diamond for yes, that green, I'm sorry, that yellow circle for no, that blue diamond for somewhat, and that green square for no change. Okay, let's see where we ended up. Okay, good. It's a, it's a good range of um, responses. So we will definitely take this feedback and, and, but it's good to see that the majority of people still feel um, more knowledgeable than they did at the beginning of the session to perform that job successfully. So that's great. Michael, you want to uh, wrap it up? I'm ready. This okay. one is similar. It's going to be an open ended uh, question. So you're going to type in your answer. Thinking about your day to day responsibilities, what other topics would interest you? for upcoming meetings. I'll read that again. Thinking about your day-to-day -day responsibilities, what other topics would interest you for upcoming meetings? You're going to click on the rectangle. You're gonna type your answer in there. So far we have one answer so far, oh, two, perfect. And for anyone who's joining late, we have, you're going to log on to Kahoot.it. That's K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T. The game pin is 744-5432. Thinking about your day-to-day -day responsibilities, what other topics would interest you for upcoming meetings? And this is more of a thought provoking question, so we can we definitely understand the kind of timing of the. Flow of the answers coming in, but we really do appreciate uh, this feedback and we'll be able to read a couple responses in real time. So, whatever you type, we will see. So uh, we trust that everyone will keep it professional and uh, G rated. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, you know, that goes without saying. Forgot to mention that, huh? <laughs> I mean, I forgot. I forgot. Hopefully you don't have to say it, but you never know. Right. Okay, so I think these will still come in as we present. So let's just see uh, what we have, Michael, if that's all right with you. You want to give it a couple more seconds? No, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready when you are. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's see. So we have 65 answers submitted and we're going to show our answers now. And we have a bit of a mix. Let's see what we have here. So uh, we have information about cultural competence, mm -hmm. um, time management, um, partnerships with employers to increase employment outcomes for clients. Uh, how to deal with work stress during the workday. Uh, more health related topics. Uh oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> home based technology support and infrastructure. I could definitely benefit from that as well. Do you see any others that you feel we need to read out loud while we're perusing this? Yeah, I just, you know, with my data minded um, lens, just the vendor employment outcomes, just then thinking of, you know, another performance metric or other ways that we can use our data to really go to that data information to knowledge. So I, I definitely think that's really valuable insight. Potential solutions to ongoing problems, right? Sometimes it's it's not the new things that we have to address, but those lingering issues that tend to kind of, you know, carry us forward or stay with us, you know, year to year to year. So. And this is all I'm perfect. seeing. I'm seeing also avoiding remote isolation. I think that's really important that someone's reaching out and saying that they that they need that. Um, that's that 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 would be very helpful for I'm sure many people. 
Yeah. More wellness, balancing work life. I think Marquita did a great job today talking about how to balance our work life. I learned a number of things from that. Providers and resources in the community. Um, great. This is very, very helpful. Yeah, and just just one more, just seeing this learning about Medicaid, just taking this time to really plug those trainings that come out from our um, our DDS HR training department. There's a lot of good information, a lot of good content that has been formatted to kind of meet our needs in this virtual space. So uh, definitely take a look at that catalog, take a look at skill support um, to really find that those kind of self paced training materials. It's all it's all good stuff, but but just the desire or the recognition of you wanting to kind of learn more about the work that we do is 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 extremely meaningful. So uh, that's it for us. Michael, there's nothing else for you. We'll hand it back over to our MC, Derek Young. But uh, we thank you all for participating. Thank you. Thank you both. So Charlotte and Michael, you guys did a great job. Coming up next, we have remarks from Director Andrew Reed, and he's going to uh, answer several, several of the questions that we submitted. Okay, thanks, Derek. Um, you know, people may know, you may have seen that last week I appeared before the DC Council Committee on Human Services to review our performance accomplishments for FY20 and 21 to date. But I have to tell you what was far more impressive than the testimony and responses to those questions was everything we heard today from people um, about the real dedication, the resilience, and um, commitment that people have had to really continuing the mission of DDS to ensure that we continue to support people, um, you know, achieving life their way and achieving the goals that they have. Um, you know, it's impressive to me, not only that people were seamlessly able to transition and that we saw performance metrics either stay the same or even improve, um, but that we also um, saw people who contributed to other, to the city's response to COVID-19, stepping up and doing details to really help across the city, helping with um, voting, helping people that had um, recently been diagnosed with COVID. And then I forgot the most recent detail that people had, and it's in Jessica's slide, so I won't be able to look back and see it. But, you know, people have really been flexible, hardworking, and committed to our mission. And um, that has been wonderful. Um, it's been amazing to see. I know this has been a really long year. Um, and I'm really impressed with how people have been able to continue our services, frankly, seamlessly. I mean, there's no doubt that the success of any organization depends on the skills and the talents of its employees. And you all really are our greatest resource here at DDS. So I just want to thank you for all that you've done and for everything you'll continue to do, because while a vaccine is here, we are still not out of the woods um, and it's going to be another few months. Um, you know, people should continue to tune in our first Friday. We do have a phone call. So any questions you have can be responded to at that time. I have so far seen only one question. I believe, and if you have a question, please feel free to type it in the chat here. Um, but the one question I saw was, and if someone can can type the response uh, so that I have it from the very beginning, um, someone had asked, can we send out again the information of when Teresa has her Zumba online so that they can participate? Um, because that was, as with our other town hall, it's a really great way to get started. Um, Although I will say Derek's music that brought me all the way back uh, was a really good way to get started at the very beginning. Um, for some of you, those were oldies. For some of us, it was just reliving our youth. Um, but anyway, uh, it, great meeting everyone, a really great representation of all the work that everyone has been doing. Um, and I'm just gonna ask if someone can, um, Someone also asked about if we can share the PowerPoint. Um, yes, we can. 
Um, it's just one PowerPoint. So if people are interested in seeing the PowerPoint, they can reach out to Jocelyn and she'll send that to you. Um, I, there's really no reason we can't just send it out to um, all DDS, quite frankly. Um, someone saying, uh, Derek, thank you that you had them and their daughter dancing. Um, great recognition uh, for all of the you know people who have had additional help in doing their work at home for the past year. Um, I really appreciated um, what Marquita had to say about trying to get those 30 minutes between work and home. But I've also recognized that there are people that have not had that at all. And I hope that people are able to find ways to get that time for themselves. Um, because it is so important, not just your dedication to taking care of the people we support and to the hard work you do here, but taking care of yourselves so that we continue to see you here. Um, and Derek, people want your playlist. I, I don't know if that's proprietary. <laughs> um, so I don't see any other questions. Um, so it's been a wonderful meeting um, that's moved along quite well so that we'll get some of our morning back. Um, and just lastly, I want to um, just remind people, you know, research estimated that nearly one third of our lives is spent at work. Um, that's about 90,000 hours of work over the average lifespan. And I'll also say for myself, the most enduring relationships I've had have been the ones that I made at work. Um, and considering the nature of human services, you're probably spending even more hours than that at work. It's important then that we remember some of our colleagues who've given so much of their lives and themselves um, throughout their careers to improve the lives of others. So we host these town halls by and to connect with one another across administrations and buildings. Um, beginning with this town hall at each of our winter town halls, we'll have an annual tribute to colleagues who are no longer with us. And so next up, our chief of staff, Jared Morris, um, has a little more on that. Thank you. Thanks, Andy, and good morning, everyone. Uh, before we close today, I wanted to just raise the curtain on the, the team behind today's successful event. Uh, we've had uh, very informative town halls, as Andy just mentioned in the past, today being no exception, all of which required a great deal of work to pull off. But as with everything else during this past year, the amount of effort to coordinate and execute what, we, what we've experienced today was tremendous. And I wanted to make sure we thank everybody on this team that made it all possible. This includes Teresa Peel, Charlisa Payne, Byron Brown, Mark Augusto, Mary Kohler, Steve Beidelman, Miriam Bolaños, Charlotte Roberts, Linda Rowe, Derek Young, Michael Siegelman, Trinivis Beam Reddy, Musu Fafana, Tiffany Johnson, Charles Manu, and of course, Jocelyn Harris. So as we begin to close and going back to Andy's final point, um, I know that everyone will agree that the events of 2020 and those thus far in 2021 are not ones we will soon forget. Uh, though today we've heard about and discussed many of our collective positive gains during the past year in, in spite of the pandemic, I also realize and want to acknowledge that we've also experienced some form of loss. So let us take this opportunity to have a moment to pay a tribute to those colleagues, the people we've supported and loved ones who've all had great contributions to our personal lives and our work lives in meaningful ways. Though they are no longer with us, they will never be forgotten.
Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to take this moment to commemorate colleagues you've lost with a moment of silence. We are grateful for the impact of our colleagues, families, and friends, and only the incomparable Stevie Wonder could, could not could have said it best. I'll leave you with this. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank you all for joining us here for our virtual town hall. We'll see you guys next time. Enjoy the music as you log out.